supply chain issues. Well, last Thanksgiving, I sat down with my wife, my daughter, and my son-in-law. Uh, this Thanksgiving, we're all in a very different circumstance. Things are a hell of a lot better, and the wages have gone up higher, faster than inflation, uh, and we have generated real economic growth. It doesn't mean these dislocations aren't real. They do affect people's lives. For example, one of the reasons why I decided to talk about the need to deal with uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the operation and the gouging that occurs in some of the pricing of beef and chicken and other things is that uh, that's why I think we're, I indica- that's why I indicated to you we're going to look at whether or not uh, there's a violation of, of antitrust laws and what they're doing. So there's a lot to look at. But the bottom line is that I think uh, that uh, and anyone who would prefer as bad as things are in terms of prices helping her, her, hurting families now, trade this Thanksgiving for last Thanksgiving. Um, Jen Epstein, Wall Street Journal. I mean, excuse me. Wow. Yeah. Now, if that doesn't restore your full faith and trust into our financial system and our current government with its regulations on it, I don't know what does. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukradowski here of wearechange.org. And bing, 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 bing. Right on cue, we have a new mutation, which there's a lot of information to get into that, of course, you will not be hearing in the corporate media. That, of course, is saber rattling as much as it can, trying to, of course, spread fear rather than, of course, calm, rational thinking, which we're going to be doing our best striving to representing in this video because uh, there's a lot of context to get into. There's a lot of information to talk about that absolutely is imperative for people to understand. But before getting into that, plus a lot more, the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast was one produced by Post America. We will be putting their YouTube channel down in the description below because they always provide very thought-provoking, creative, artistic edits which are critiques of our modern day society, which we can't get enough of since there's so much to criticize and especially mock with headlines like this from Yahoo News that proudly proclaim absolutely insane lunatic thinking announcing that the recent court proceedings surrounding Kyle is, quote, proof that white women birthed White supremacists while black mothers birth their victims. A- again, this Stacy Patton that wrote this, wrote this again, I have to tell you, in a serious matter, this is not satire, this is not comedy. It'll be interesting to see this person's response to crime statistics. But understanding this, I do believe the proper response to this is to laugh at it because of how absolutely absurd it is. And I think that's why there has been such a recent attack on people laughing at the lunatics pushing a lot of this insane cult-like doctrine. I think this is why we have recently seen attacks on people like Dave Chappelle, who, by the way, allegedly was just heckled at his old school for being, quote, childish, surrounding, of course, the latest manufactured outrage surrounding his latest Netflix special, The Closer. And after people started calling him names and criticizing him, Dave Chappelle did something that, of course, is extremely rare in our modern society and actually engaged in peaceful conversation, encouraging the audience members to actually talk about their issues and to ask questions. That is, of course, something that if everyone did, this would calm a lot of tensions, stop a lot of hate, and and allow people to work out their differences with each other, rather than, of course, fighting like spiteful children on the line. So I commend Dave Chappelle for doing this, but it's not only him under attack as Vice just launched a very unfunny, very serious allegation against Joe Rogan, calling him, quote, far right in an article that, of course, is attempting to cancel him on Thanksgiving. Yes, Annie Merlin criticized Joe Rogan as being a part of the far right 
even though he does publicly espouse many leftist and socialistic policies on this podcast to millions of people. By the way, this is also the same media organization, Vice, that recently also ran a piece that was entitled, quote, Plenty of Early American Colonizers Were Super Gay. With their latest piece, The Pilgrims Were Queer, and who gives a damn? And... <laughs> And how can you not laugh at these people for, for being as ridiculous as they are, for taking themselves as serious as they are? And I have to be honest, it's good to see that there's still some comedy making a strong stance against the cult as many people are coming out, standing up for personal free speech more than ever in resistance to so many people trying to take it away. Also, the situation that we're in right now, you can pretty much just cry or laugh I prefer to laugh, and that's why I created thebestpoliticalshirts.com with amazing masterpieces like this, which of course helps provide the general public with knowledge about parasites. And if you want to help inform the public, you need to go to thebestpoliticalshirts.com. We are running a Black Friday sale right now with the promo code Luke, where you could get up to 15% off on the latest merchandise that, of course, is absolutely meant towards waking up people out of the paradigms that they have been put in, attempting, of course, to squeegee clean their third eyes as best as we can through visual art. Get the merchandise before it sells out, as, of course, there is major supply chain shortages that are affecting the distribution of these shirts, socks, cell phone cases, hats, water bottles, yoga mats, you name it, we got it. They make great gifts, especially for your politically inclined friends and family members. The best political shirts Dot com, the only true form of activism that is not yet fully censored. There's shirts here that I can't even show you. Check them all out on the best political shirts. Dot com and because you do i'm still here now of course the supply chain shortages aren't only hitting shirt stores they're hitting almost every aspect of our society as of course the cost of living the cost the cost of groceries the cost of energy has dramatically gone up and of course you could bet your bottom dollar this is only going to continue from here as of course we told you this almost a year and a half ago almost two years ago this as mainline celebrities are trying to normalize getting robbed in big cities as recently Seth Rogen displayed through his Twitter account, which explained getting routinely robbed and having your items stolen from is called a part of living in a big city. Well, now it definitely is, especially with crime and poverty increasing. And of course, that's going to be happening at a higher level with more government intervention. Who's to blame for all of this? Well, according to 0.001% Native American Elizabeth Warren, it's it's all because of greedy corporations <laughs> that all of a sudden have decided this n now, just, just now is the time. All the corporations in the entire world working together deciding now is the time to charge Americans extra to quote, keep their stock prices high. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's the, the, the case here here because there's no data or evidence suggesting that there is though a lot of government intervention that has been raising energy prices that has been raising prices of everything and creating of course economic havoc economic havoc which according to some market analyzers will be made worse especially with the latest announcement of a new variant which has already dramatically affected the stock market here in the united states this at a time where the world health organization has just announced that the seven-day average of daily new cases surrounding this sickness has fallen to its globally lowest point since last October. This, as people are finding out through the LA Times, that the procedure they were told to take to stop all of this is not that effective in a short amount of time. This, as Dr. Fauci was previously just telling us very recently, that it was 100% safe and effective. And as the LA Times is saying that it's not that effective, we now have a new strain that allegedly is coming out of 
South Africa that carries a lot of mutations that we're seeing a lot of fear-mongering about. As we're finding out that this new variant could have emerged from an HIV patient, it allegedly has twice as many mutations as the Delta variant, and it could make the procedure against this sickness even more ineffective than even the LA Times quotes that it is. The World Health Organization has just announced that they're naming this new variant B11529 as Omnicron. That was an anonymous name. <laughs> Holy cow. All of this as the corporate media is raising alarms about this new mutation as many countries have taken very drastic actions against it. This as many countries have banned travel from South Africa with even the European Union telling its member countries to stop flights from that country as there are reported cases in South Africa, in Botswana, one in Hong Kong, one in Israel, one in Belgium, allegedly related to this mutation as already the United Kingdom, Israel, Germany, Singapore, Czech Republic, the Netherlands have ceased all travel from South Africa, Botswana, Lesto, Istawini, Zimbabwe, and Nambia. This as we're finding out that the United States is considering also banning flights from South Africa as well. There's even video of passengers landing from South Africa in the Netherlands being denied entry into that country. And with so many alarm bells going off, we have to ask ourselves what's really going on here? And we don't know. There's not enough data. As even Dr. Fauci says that there's no proof yet that this new mutation could evade the procedure. It is currently unknown whether this new variant has a high mortality rate, a higher one than previous variants. Is it more lethal or is it more transmissible? Well, again, we don't know. There's, there's not enough data. And I think the Belgium prime minister calling this new mutation COVID-21 is uh, a, a little bit uh, ahead of himself, to say the least, especially with this video coming out with the South African medical health chief breaking down what's actually happening here and explaining how this mutation has affected South Africa. You know, I am practicing in Tswane, where the epicenter is. And uh, so far, what we have seen is very, very mild cases. So not sure why we are all up in arms. Um, we know that there's a lot of mutations, but no one can tell us at this stage whether it means something mm. or whether it's um, just going to fade away. Yeah. So why do we have so much fear-mongering about this, Dan. Why is Israel saying that they're on the verge of a state of emergency? Is this fear justified? In my opinion, from my perspective, absolutely not. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not here giving you medical advice. But from the information that we are getting from South Africa, we should call this latest fear-mongering what it is, and it's fear-mongering. That, of course, many politicians are using to justify a bigger power grab, like we've seen in Australia, where the army is literally taking people into camps that have been around people that have alleged to test positive. Ireland is looking to propose similar measures in its country. As of course, many countries, many politicians are calling for more lockdowns in relation to this latest mutations. The same lockdowns that previously didn't work. Other countries are pushing the procedure that this new mutation may not work with for some reason, which uh, again is mind-boggling. And with the world already dealing with the fifth seasonal virus, I think it's very fair to say that this sickness is uh, endemic and it's going to be staying with us for a while. So acting and implementing policies to allegedly totally wipe it out or absolutely nonsensical. In my opinion, I, I think it's worthwhile to protect the vulnerable just like we do during flu season. But go on with our lives and not panic in the realm of uncertainty and the unknown since a lot of the information surrounding this new variant is still not known so to freak out about it and to implement more emergency laws and protocols and lockdowns and restrictions in my opinion is absolutely ridiculous but that is just my own perspective what do you think let me know what you guys think the response to this should be in the comment section below. I always appreciate your constructive criticism. I wish we had the dislike button. We don't, so I would have known, you know, if I'm doing good or bad. But 
That's another story. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys actively purchasing the shirts, sharing these videos with your friends and family members. And that's why I am eternally grateful for you guys giving me this opportunity. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.